But uh, Chris Benoit. Wow. Um, the most intense human being I've probably ever met. Um, had the fortune of riding with Chris for a while, training with Chris, sharing hotels, um, sharing many dinners, many drinks. Um, people can say what they want about what happened. A lot of those people are people that didn't know him, never knew him. It's the entire thing obviously is just as tragic as you can imagine. But those of us that knew Chris can separate who he was and who we knew him as from the, the person who was obviously suffering from a lot of brain injury and, you know, talk about pouring hot coffee on a computer, you know, just, I mean, complete. Um, and, and sadly that, that really is what created the conversation of CTE, especially amongst wrestlers, you know, um, we don't see chair shots very often anymore. We don't see a lot of, you know, it's, so it's, the whole thing is, I'm not sitting here trying to make excuses for what happened or anything, but, um, if you spend any amount of time with Chris, then you know how much he loved his family and you just, you, you still can't even really make sense of how everything went down or happened and, and who's to really say, you know, I'm not creating conspiracies or anything, but like, I don't know. You'd have to, you'd have to read the, the, the forensics and the, the reports and the investigation and all those things. But, I mean, when it all comes down to just somebody isn't themselves anymore and has become a rampaging zombie, um, you would hope that people can understand that that is that's not the guy. That's not the that's not the guy that would brag about his kids. Like, yeah, that's not the guy that would do anything for his wife that's not the guy who would work out for hours and hours and hours in the morning on the road so that he wouldn't work out so much on his off days just so he could spend more time with his family you know um that yeah that 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 thing that whole that whole thing kind of messed me up because he had just called me like a week before that to check on my mental state and to see how I was doing. So when all that came about, it is just, yeah, the whole thing is it's just a nightmare. You know, it's the whole thing is a nightmare, absolute nightmare. Um, but one of the most um, generous, just the real deal, man. Like <laughs> he was the real deal the real deal like as real professional wrestler like as i've ever been in the locker room life just the real deal you know i don't know how to go more in depth about it but yeah what did the office one word one mean? word right one word is that what you oh, man, <laughs> no. how do i do it uh, what, was the, what was the office's reaction did they tell you don't speak about this in public. I mean, were there any rules when it came to Chris moving forward? See, without getting too conspiracy-ish, um, I read this book. I don't know the, the true validity of it, but I had read a book that alluded to the, the office knowing about what had happened when it happened. Apparently there are phone records of someone in Stanford being on the phone with Chris after the first accident with Nancy, but before he, I guess, took his son's, you know, um, I guess what I'm saying is the office from what I believe and feel 
knew more about what they led on to. And one of the things that makes it suspect to me is that we were all in Corpus Christi about to do a super show when we found out the news. Now, mind you, that whole loop beforehand, there was like an ECW pay-per-view. That's where he like didn't show up for that. Right. Nobody can, nobody can find Chris. You know, I think Chavo had received these cryptic messages about the dogs being in the back and left them out. And, um, there was communication somewhere uh, between off the office and Chris. Uh, so when all that came about and they canceled the super show and they were like, everyone just like go, like I was in Austin. So I just was like, well, I'm just going to drive back home like four hours or whatever. And then they said, SmackDown in San Antonio tomorrow is voluntary. And, I, and the, that always stood out to me because I thought, you know, none of the info on the case had come out yet. No one had any idea what had happened, right? Um, so if we're doing a tribute show to our fallen comrade, why is it voluntary instead of mandatory? You know, like, when have you ever heard of the TV being voluntary, you know, like if you're under contract. And so that was very odd. I thought that was very odd. And I wouldn't be surprised if the office did that just to squeeze one more date of ratings out of the whole situation, knowing what had happened. Someone in the office knew what had happened. I don't know if that was at the Mark Carano or who, one of these weasels in the office, one of these yes men um, cronies. Um, but I feel I'm confident. I, I feel they knew a lot more than they led on to, to try and save their ass. Um, but yeah, I mean, certainly they, they didn't want any kind of ties to it, obviously. Right. They spent like over a million dollars just to erase this legend out of the history books, to change all their media, everything. I mean, they, how they fired one of the best wrestlers they ever had later on, right? Uh, da Danielson, they, you know, just for doing some tie choke thing, like he had the tie and he choked Justin Roberts or something and they got rid of him. That was the excuse they used for getting rid of, you know, so um, that is a company that I feel is masterful in deflecting heat off of themselves as much as possible. Um, and you know, one of the big red flags is when you it's it's like anybody who's either part of like a union job or like a job they really hate where it's just like we're family, we're family. It's like when you hear the word family, there's like, you know, that's going to cause some red flags. Um, so, you know, we're all just kind of circus animals, really. <laughs> and if one goes down, they replace them with another, you know, and but but I think you know they're they're absolute masters in deflecting what they can off of themselves. Um, and it is what it is, you know. It, it's the whole thing's just tragic, uh, absolutely tragic. So um, I remember when I was cruiserweight champion, um, Chris had his uh, older son David on the road with him. He was a young kid, maybe 13 or something at the time. And the second I would see him, I would bring him my cruiserweight title and be like, hang on to this for me before I go up there. And he would walk around. He was just so proud of like that cruiserweight. Title. And I knew it was in good hands. I wasn't like, oh, this kid's going to lose my belt. Like I knew it was probably safer with him than with me, you know? Like, <laughs> and that always, I know that that, that meant a lot, like, I wasn't doing it for any reason. And just, I thought if I was in this kid's position, you know, people are just, you know, I would, that would make me feel comfortable. You know, if one of the guys, especially one of the belt holders came and gave me the, like, that would be so cool. And I thought like, I want like, that would be neat. I'd like to, you know, give this kid this moment. Yeah. I liked him. I like, I like David a lot. Like I said, I mean, that's Chris and I were pretty close. Um, and so that was, that's always been something that's really been 
you know, I'd like to eventually see David again and talk with him and share stories and stuff. So, um, yeah, when people talk bad about Chris, I mean, you're talking about people who didn't know him. And again, I'm not excusing what happened. It's horrific, horrific. Um, you have to look at all the issues here, you know. It's scary. It's a scary thing for us to think of ourselves as like time bombs because of this brain condition that most of us have that you can't test for apparently until it's like until you're doing an autopsy so like how are we to know what's going on inside of our heads you know and it's very easy to point fingers when you're not the one taking bumps you're not the one getting concussed you know it's very easy to to judge but it's scary man fucking shit's scary you know Ooh. Stuff, Sorry, I mean, if it's all to get no, so dark, I, I, but like, I it's a real deal. It. It's a real issue, man. No, yeah. and like you look Something at like, like you. no, 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 no. I think these are important things that need to be discussed. Um, more power to somebody like Chris Nowinski, who's behind like the leading CTE research going on. You know, if people don't don't know the name, please look, look up Chris Nowinski. He was at WWE for a short amount of time got concussed i think he was like a tough enough guy or something i'm not really sure right went to harvard or was it harvard or i think it was harvard Harvard. brilliant guy and now he's committed i mean he's for a long time he's been doing this but his posts i mean everything's about head injuries you know whether it's football little league whatever it is but this is like the leader in research for traumatic brain trauma you know and CTE in particular. So um, that would be, that that could be an interesting, absolutely talk to get a hold of Chris Minsky. Great guy too. Very cool. So yeah, 